Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Bonnie. Those of you that have heard us speak before know that we like to present tools and ideas that we have used that have made, empower, made powerful impressions on our lives. And just because now we express love and prosperity in our lives, it doesn't mean that we had it easy all the time. I don't know where we would have been if we hadn't um, discovered religious science early on in our relationship. We had uh, ups and downs, and we each, I know it's hard to believe, but we each had specific ideas of how we thought the world ought to work. <laughs> and I'm a Scorpio, and he's a Gemini. <laughs> so, you know, it, the reality today could be a lot different if we hadn't discovered religious science. So we love, <laughs> love to share what we've learned. And it's not like we were the quickest learners, let me tell you that. We had our ups and downs and we stayed stuck because we're pretty, we used to say that we were very tenacious. <laughs> and then in this Prosperity Plus class, Doug had the revelation that, you know, maybe it's not so smart to keep saying that the Baileys are tenacious and we can power through everything on our own. <laughs> So, we have released that word and just know that we're divine beings expressing spirit at every chance that we get. That we're open to receive and we're open to new information. Later on, he's going to talk about the cosmic two by four. <laughs> that is not the uh, most um, pleasant way to learn a lesson in religious science, so that's why we like to share with you perhaps more ease and grace. So thank you, Bonnie, for the introduction. And, and I think I said, I don't know where we would be if early in our relationship we hadn't started studying religious science. So many of the ideas, frankly, were foreign to me, but they really resonated with me. I had been in the Lutheran church, and was, it was drilled into my head that this was the only way to get through life. This was the only way to get into heaven. You had to toe the line, you had to be there, and you had to do what they told you. So I left as a, early, as a young adult. And I'm just so delighted to have found the Center for Spiritual Living. There was something within me that resonated with it that knew that I had come home. And the energy in here, don't you guys agree? that the energy is marvelous. That you come in here on Sunday and you don't feel judged, you don't feel less than, but that you've come home. That people here love you and especially Reverend Bonnie loves you. Oh, and by the way, I noticed that my cat loves me, so I have this scratch on my nose, so I really don't want you to keep looking at it, okay? But that's what it is, it's a scratch. Really. And you've probably heard us talk about one of the, well, there were two powerful lessons at the beginning for me, and I believe for Doug too. When we got it that, that our life was like a laboratory, then we could change it, it was just like opening our eyes. That means for us that we can go through life doing the same thing that we've done all, all the time and see what's out picturing. And if we don't like what's out picturing, we can trace it back, with the help of classwork and practitioners and ministers, to uncover that belief within you that is out picturing that in your life, whether it's good or bad. If it's good, wonderful. But if it's something you want to change, there are tools around here and people around here that can really help you do that. So we could look out in our lives and, and, and in accordance with the theme this month, you can look and see, is there love or isolation? Is there abundance or lack or struggle? Is there security or fear or concern? And is there peace or chaos? And, and is it okay with you or do you want to change it? We also really liked, and I'm sure you've seen this saying, change your thinking, change your life. That goes hand in hand with seeing your life as a laboratory. 
Look at what you're thinking. Be conscious. Even if you have to, there's so many tools in religious science, carry a little notebook with you. And if you hear that you're judging something or that you're angry at somebody, make a note real quick and do forgiveness work. Release them however you need to release them so you can move on into more loving relationships. Change your thinking, change your life. How simple does that sound? So we took that and knew that the more that we changed our inner work without our action, the more quickly we could manifest the results that we wanted. This month's theme is quite a mouthful, don't you think? But it too seems simple. Love is security, peace and prosperity for all. Who wouldn't want that? So how does it resonate with us? I'll break it down. Love as security. Well, love is an energy that connects us. And if we live in a society where we feel connected, then we feel supported. We feel that we're not alone, that we're not the only person in the rowboat. And security is a state of mind that results in really recognizing that we are supported by the energies of life, rather than being in struggle or conflict with it. Sounds to us like peace and prosperity for all. Is a world with a win-win focus and a connection with others through love. As we look out at our world, we do see individuals are increasingly connected to more via technology and to technology through the internet, phones, different devices, yet they are increasingly disconnected from people and from human interaction. To me, it does seem that facets of our world have evolved into a me focus rather than a we win-win type focus. It's all about, sometimes it looks like it's all about the individual. Posting on Facebook what they ate, where they went to get a cup of coffee, uh, what time they took a break at work, uh, what they fed their cat, if their cat scratched them on their nose. <laughs> And it would seem like this might connect people, but it really doesn't. It allows people to be isolated in their homes and see the world through their computer. And we've seen it in restaurants, and I'm sure you have too, that you have a group of people eating together, but they're not always talking. They're each texting. They may even be texting people at the table with them. <laughs> really. So we're sometimes losing that connection. The good news I've seen is lately there have been campaigns advertised on television as a way to get people to recognize maybe it's good to have phone-free meal time. On the other hand, you could say that it's interesting to see how connection, how the uh, technology is connecting us to one another. As, think about this for many of us in this room, or some of us in this room perhaps, it's connecting us through artificial limbs, artificial joints, um, nanos that go through your body and diagnose disease. Actually, probably artificial just about anything these days. This will make us increasingly dependent on other people to acquire and maintain the technology. And it will help us stay connected because it will pre present opportunities to help one another, to be of service in different ways for medical needs and support. So it can make us, uh, once again, a more interconnected society and more willing to look at service to others and outside of ourselves. It is and can be and continue to be a dynamic force for good in the world. It's a wonderful tool for lifting people in underdeveloped countries out of poverty and bringing education and training tools to underutilized people around the world, thus improving the quality of life and peace and security and prosperity around the world. Imagine that it could potentially lead to resolving conflicts 
with a better flow of information going throughout the world. Peace and prosperity we see spreading all around the world. For each one of us is a divine being. Each one of us is spirit expressing. So we choose to see that happening. We choose to see more and more people recognizing who they are and being supported by technology and by other people. Peace and prosperity abound. Before I introduce Doug for the rest of the talk, I want to let you know that there are some angel cards on the volunteer sign-up table. And these are wonderful, fun little cards. You can either look through them and pick the one you want, or you can say, Spirit, I know that whatever one I pick is perfect for me. There may be cards on gratitude, freedom, authenticity, peace, abundance, joy. So when you pick up the card, please also look at the list for volunteer opportunities that you can sign up for. Now it's my pleasure to introduce my husband and indeed soulmate, the man who changed my life and made me, helped make me a better person with, along with Ernest Holmes, <laughs> Doug Bailey. I would, uh, yeah, well I'm, this is a, this is no, a. I'll stay over here. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll get over here. <laughs> Of the many things that we all have to be grateful for today, the one thing that you, you haven't thought about yet is how grateful you should be that I don't have a green narrow jacket at home. Nehru. <laughs> Nehru jacket. <laughs> but we are color coordinated. <laughs> uh, Tina and I have over the years, um, been involved in a lot of uh, group studies and, and, and uh, work, work um, uh, just classwork. And one of the one of the uh, groups that we had had enjoyed for for a number of years was uh, group studies uh, around the Abundance Book by uh, John Randolph Price. Um, it's a wonderful catalyst for for growth. And this morning, we have selected some of the points that perfectly fit this topic. The first being, am I a joyful giver? Do I freely share my money and myself on a regular basis in recognition that the divine is my source? Um, Tina and I have been tithers um, for, geez, 35 years. And the tithing reminds us that money is a divine energy, serving as a catalyst for expressing life more fully. We feel that it has increased our effectiveness in our world, has enhanced our quality of life. And the process of tithing shows, us, shows up in our lives as abundance, security, love, peace, and has enhanced our ability to better serve our family, our workplace, and our community. We feel more secure with our environment and it is easier to feel connected to those around us. If more people, um, I, Catherine Ponder has a wonderful quotation, if more people recognize God as the source of their supply and entertain thoughts of abundance, not only for themselves but for others, they would never have to worry about money. The second quote out of the Abundance book is, am I listening to the voice within for guidance and instruction regarding any action that I am taking in the outer world? Am I following through on that action? This reminds me of two wonderful truisms. The first is, we can learn from our past or we are guaranteed to continue to repeat it. The second is the, 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 is the definition of insanity, which I, I'm sure we've all heard, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. 
When such situations occur in our life that we label as difficult, we know we have a choice. We can power through, like many of us you know, tend to do, that thing that probably created the situation in the first place, or, and expect different results. Or we can take a moment and just be within and see if there, there is internal guidance uh, available to us. Tina and I have seen that when we expect opportunities to appear in our life, they, they do. We invite you to be a conscious competent and listen to that voice within. Or you can do as Tina was talking about and wait for the cosmic two by four to come and get your attention. Um, our recommendation is to be present and open to that voice and that, and that guidance. Let's remember to look at ourselves as conduit through which the divine expresses as love. That this loving energy uh, connects us with all that is around us and guides us to a fuller expression of life. So how do we move um, these wonderful ideas into experience? You can start by seeing difficult experiences as a blessing. There are opportunity, they are opportunities for us to take a look at alternatives that can be transforming. Difficulties are learning experiences, much like firewalks. We have a chance to face the flames of life, and we can walk away, or we can choose to unleash that giant that each of us have within. Difficult experiences provide an opportunity to grow or not. Either way, it is our choice. The next quote out of the uh, Abundance book is, am I involved in and making time for a meaningful activity for creating self-expression? What is your heart's desire? Do I take action to, cover, to uncover my purpose and desire and direct activities to have that unfold. Um, do we spend our free time in, in service rather than spending hours in mind-numbing electronic interaction or drinking beer and obsessing over our favorite sports team? That said, Tina and I do enjoy our Friday date night at the movies and other activities which, is, which allow us to decompress. The fun U.S. time is good for our relationship, and downtime uh, down is important for all of us. That said, exploration of our potential is even better for us. As I go through each day, I see, am I going through each day being connected with uh, those around me? In nature, we see bodies of water that stagnate when there is only water coming in and no avenue circulating it. Do we see the same stagnation in our lives when we feel disconnected? Love, peace, Security, prosperity come as we expect opportunities and listen to the spirit of uh, the spirit's message to us. A wonderful quote out of Ernest Holmes is everything I think about and do is animated by the divine presence, sustained by infinite power and multiplied by the divine goodness. From there, peace, prosperity, love, security abounds in my life now. The next powerful quote to us out of the, uh, the Abundance book is on gratitude. Have I expressed a deep sense of gratitude to, to spirit within before my good comes forth into the visible manifestation? Is my heart overflowing with thanksgiving and joy the majority of my waking hours? 
In moving from me to the we, we move ourselves further into alignment with that divine um, spirit. Peace, prosperity, security, and love are ours as we give thanks for our work, our relationships, and the institutions that support us. In a world with the energies of win-lose, a free society requires tools to counter these energies when they express destructively. Yesterday was Veterans Day, which provides us an opportunity and provided us an opportunity to express our thanksgiving to the members of the military past and present. It is easy to lose sight of the fact that our military and law enforcement and their members are tools to moderate behavior, which are dangerously or destructive, uh, or, or, or which are dangerous or destructive to our society or us individually. These tools are employed by our leaders. Being unhappy with the tools is like getting mad at a hammer for a bent nail or poor, poor workmanship. That's a good image, please. <laughs> the world allows their militaries to the, uh, see. Uh, history sees the use of military during the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis as having made, made the world a safer place. And the decisions made regarding our uh, military involvement in Vietnam as making the world a more dangerous place. The world allowed their militaries to atrophy, uh, atrophy following World War I, requiring a devastating cost in global lives and resources. I'm sure history will see the use of law enforcement in controlling Chicago's violences over the past few years as a failure of civil leadership. Each of these reflect how effective or ineffective these tools have been used. I know we all pray for a world that is inclusive, driven by win-win perspective. With Thanksgiving approaching and until the day a win-win perspective prevails, this Thanksgiving I will express my thankfulness that we are blessed, all of us, with men and women who are willing to put their lives on the line to protect and serve their fellow man. I am also thankful that we can learn from the past and make better decisions that can bring us peace, prosperity, and security for all. To wrap up, I want to recap the, quest the uh, questions for you to ponder this week. Am I a joyful giver? Am I listening to the voice within for guidance and instruction? Do I make time for meaningful activity for creating self-expression? And I, have I expressed a deep sense of gratitude to, to spirit? Does my heart overflow with thanksgiving and thankfulness and joy? In, clo in closing, if we see, um, in closing, if we see evolving technologies can be a tool that helps us create peace and prosperity for all, let us all recognize, as Gandhi suggests, we must be the change we wish to see. And paraphrasing Teddy, uh, Teddy Roosevelt, let us believe we can and we are halfway there. I'd like to leave with a, a wonderful prayer from um, Ernest Holmes. It's a prayer for, pros uh, for, for prosperity. Today, I accept God's gift of abundance. Today, everything I am and have is increased. I identify everything I do with success. I think affirmatively, and with all of my prayer, I accept abundance. What I need, whatever I need it, and whenever I need it, for as long as I need it, is always at hand. I no longer see neg uh, negation or delay or stagnation in my undertaking. Rather, I claim 
that the action of li the living spirit prospers everything I do, increases every good I possess, and br brings success to me and everyone I meet. And so it is. Thank you.